Whether you first heard of Lock and Key when Netflix dropped a trailer for the upcoming series, or have been following the project since it began as a twisted comic from IDW Publishing back in 2008, like me, the story of its journey to the screen is almost as fascinating and unbelievable as the tale of the Lock family at its center. It involves multiple pilots, a movie trilogy, and even Hollywood legend Steven Spielberg. So let's take a look back at Lock and Key's road to the small screen. co created by writer Joe Hill and artist Gabriel Rodriguez, the first issue of Lock and Key was published by IDW in February 2008, introducing readers to the Lock family and the magical keys found within their creepy ancestral home of Key House. Thanks to Lock and Key's enthralling mythology, horrifying scares, and the honest way it depicted a family processing trauma, it immediately caught on with fans, earned heaps of praise from critics, and won several awards. Not one week after the first issue of Lock and Key hit shelves, the screen rights were acquired by Dimension Films, but in what would become a trend for Lock and Key adaptations, things didn't go according to plan. In February 2010, the rights went to DreamWorks, and the duo behind the Transformers and Star Trek movies, Alex Kurtzman and Roberto Orsi, came on board to adapt Lock and Key. Later that year, Steven Spielberg joined the project as a producer, and together they decided that instead of a movie, Lock and Key would be a better fit for TV. The resulting pilot made for Fox was directed by famed music video director Mark Romanek, with a cast featuring Miranda Otto, Nick Stahl, and singer-turned-actor Jesse McCartney. But despite many promising elements, Fox passed on the pilot in May 2011. According to Hill, in a 2014 interview with Collider, Fox passed on it because it was too scary. However, the show makers were so proud of the pilot, they got permission from Fox to screen it at San Diego Comic-Con 2011. It's pretty much unheard of for a studio to show unaired pilots to the public, but Lock and Key was proving to be anything but ordinary. I was actually there in the crowd and got to see it myself, and while it was faithful to the comic and had some great performances, it ran through the whole first volume of the comic in one episode, and I felt a bit of the magic was lost as they sped through the material. So maybe things happen for a reason. Then in 2014, Lock and Key returned to Comic-Con with big news. A film trilogy was in the works at Universal Pictures, but almost as quickly as New Hope arrived, it was snatched away. In 2015, news came from Hill that the movies were no longer happening, but he still had plans to pursue some kind of adaptation. In April 2017, Lock and Key got its second shot at the small screen thanks to Hulu and the team of Carlton Cuse, Lindsay Springer, and director Scott Derrickson, although Derrickson was replaced with IT movie director Andy Muschietti as the pilot's director. Again, Lock and Key had a powerhouse team of genre names backing it, and again, the studio passed on the pilot. The bad news came in March 2018, though there was little information on why Hulu wasn't interested beyond the fact that Hulu CEO Randy Freer simply did not like the show. After Hulu passed, the Lock and Key pilot was shopped around to other networks. Eventually, Netflix took on the project, but decided to order a redeveloped version with Cuse and Joe Hill still attached and Muschietti staying on as an executive producer. Meredith Averill, a producer on The Haunting of Hill House, joined as showrunner alongside Q's. Finally, after years of failed attempts, the show now has a home on Netflix. But that isn't to say all of the previous efforts were for naught. Yeah, we keep joking that one day there should be a college course where they take all of the versions of Lock and Key and sort of dissect them, because it's a great lesson in there's not one way to skin a cat forgive the grotesque saying, but it's a great lesson in that. And then so they're all versions are gonna be very different, but you know, all keeping in the spirit of the comic. We had a chance to really do stuff with the property that, you know, that we could do because it was for Netflix. We had the money, the time, and the resources to really dig in and figure out what the critical elements were. And I think that we just, I think as creators, had our own vision of what we wanted it to be. And um, it just took a while to get it to a place where you know, it was right. Cuse is in a unique spot given that he worked on the Hulu pilot as well. He explained that the uh, key difference was a pivot from horror to fantasy. It was a different tone and we did that version with Andy Muschietti who's obviously a horror director and I think we lean more into the fantasy on the Netflix version and I think that was really right for the property. Now after a 12 year journey involving three pilots, a movie trilogy, numerous writers and actors, and what has to be an astonishing number of prop keys, the show now has a home at Netflix. For more on Lock and Key, check out our spoiler-free impressions of the first season and how the show put a new spin on the iconic head key. 
Thanks for watching, and don't forget to follow and subscribe for more from IGN.